In this video, I'm going to show you this pen made by the Taiwanese brand Narwhal and talk about it from an artist's perspective. How good is this pen for drawing? What are its pros? What are its cons? Why do I think that despite having a few drawbacks, that this is a very useful pen for artists? Let's take a close look. The past few years have been exciting times for the fountain pen user with a flood of well-built inexpensive pens made by brands such as Moonman, Pen BBS, and Twisby entering the market. The pens made by Narwhal are a recent entry, but they have already distinguished themselves for their build quality and attractive pricing. To be honest, I've sworn off buying any more pens in this price range, at least temporarily, because I have way too many and don't need more. But since my students frequently ask for inexpensive pen recommendations, I feel an obligation to try it. Let's take a look at the pen body. This is a very nice sized pen, and here's a comparison between the Twisby VAC 700R and the Pen BBS 456, which are very similar in size. I generally like large pens, so this is a plus for me, and I like that these, this pen has a substantial weight to it. The build quality is very comparable as well, with a good finish, smooth threading, no shaking parts, etc. And at this price point, there's very little to complain about. The cap has a narrowing at the end that seals off the nib, which is great because it keeps the nib from drying out. And because of this feature, I find that this pen starts right away, even when not used for several weeks. This is a piston filler, which gives a very decent ink capacity, something that's quite useful for artists. And the mechanism is quite precise. Unlike the pistons on the Twisbees, let's say the Twisby Ecos, that sometimes get a little bit stuck, this one moves right away, which is fantastic for a reason that I'll talk about towards the end of the video. As you can see, this is a demonstrator which allows you to see the quantity and type of ink inside, also very useful for the artist. By the way, this model is a fancy limited edition that was made by Narwhal in collaboration with a well-known YouTuber artist who, if you watch my channel, you're probably aware of. It was only a little bit more expensive than the regular model, and I bought it because it looked like the piston mechanism was made out of sturdier metal parts. It turned out that only the outer part was metal, and that it had the same plastic piston rod as the regular model. Oh well. Now let's talk ergonomics. The section is nice and long, so your fingers don't sit on the threading, and even if they did, the threads are nice and smooth, so they won't bother you. As I mentioned frequently in other videos, I sometimes like to sneak my fingers back on my pens, particularly when sketching, and this pen is just the right width for me to be able to do this comfortably. The pen does post, but very shallowly. And the cap has this metal piece on it, making it very heavy. So when you post the pen, it becomes way too long and very heavily weighted towards the back. Now, if you're looking for someone to dissect a dissect the pen from an engineering standpoint, talk about tolerances, this is the wrong channel, but allow me to nitpick a little bit. If the pen is not designed to post, such as a Twisby VAC 700, then fine. But if the pen does post, then it should post well. Why would you design it so that it posts so shallowly that it's completely too long and unusable? Okay, nitpicking session over, because really this pen is perfectly comfortable unposted and otherwise quite well balanced. So to review, the build quality is very good, as are the ergonomics, the fact that this is a piston filler is fantastic, especially at this price point, and that it's a demonstrator is something that, as an artist, I find quite useful. Now let's talk about the nib. This is a steel number no. 6 nib in medium, made by Narwhal in-house. Okay, now let's take this pen through its paces. Keep in mind that this is a review for artists, for people that like to draw with their fountain pens, so a lot of the strokes I'm going to make are probably not going to make sense for people that use their pens to write. But uh, let's start off with a slow line. It's a fairly juicy, wet medium that actually pushes a little bit towards the broad. So this is a Twisby broad nib, and it puts down a very comparable line. Now let's test it for pressure. This pen does not have a lot of flexibility, but you can tease out a little bit more line width out of it, and it works quite well. One thing I like about this pen is that it's a very decent reverse writer. So if I use reverse writing, it puts down a extra fine to fine line. And then, and this is not so uncommon in fountain pens, I find that when I use a very light touch, I can tease out a slightly lighter line. Right, so I'm barely, barely making contact with the paper. It allows me to work a little bit lighter, put down a thinner line. Um, 
again, that's one of the reasons why I like fountain pens. Even a pen that has no flexibility to it, uh, if you have a light touch, you can sometimes tease out a slightly lighter line, which is good for sketching. All right, so, so far we've been working slowly. Uh, let's speed up because that's an important aspect in art. Sometimes you work slowly, methodically, and sometimes you really need to speed up. Uh, particularly when you're cross-hatching, you need to put down a lot of long, even strokes. Right, almost impossible to do these slowly. Now one thing I noticed, and I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to reproduce this here, is that, a little bit here, that this pen at very high speeds will have a tendency to skip. Now, sometimes this is a product of the paper, sometimes a product of the artist's hand, uh, but something to be aware of. Uh, when you're working really fast, let's see if I can really speed up and reproduce this effect, and you'll see it in my drawing demo later. So right now it's being fairly consistent. Okay, so we get a little bit of skipping. In reverse writing, it really skips, uh, but it's reverse writing. It's a little bit of a cheat, right? Uh, the pen is really not intended to be used this way. Um, so as long as I'm working slowly, the reverse writing works really well. Uh, when I speed up, however, uh, it becomes really skippy. But again, uh, this is just a bonus, right? Reverse writing, the pen is not intended to be used this way. Um, all right, uh, let's do some other different kinds of hatching. So uh, let's hatch from a different direction. This is very long hatching using the elbow. Um, okay, you can see it works fairly well. It skips a little tiny bit, not too big an issue. Um, what else should I do? Well, uh, let's do a few little doodles, right? Uh, so really light heavier, right? Uh, works well at pretty high speeds if you want to ske sketch quickly with it. So all in all, a very practical, very functional nib that works under many different conditions, under normal drawing speed, reverse writing works relatively well. Uh, with hatching, again, every once in a while, it'll skip on you, but for the most part, the line is very consistent. Um, and one thing I like about it is that it writes a little bit on the wetter side than some of the Twisbees or the Pen BBS. Let's take this pen out for a test drive and do a little drawing. This is going to be a portrait of one of my favorite writers, Stefan Zweig. As I already mentioned, despite this being a medium nib, with light pressure, you can tease out a lighter line. This lighter line is hard to control, however, so this is not a pen I would sketch things in with. While I enjoyed the smoothness and wetness of working with this pen, I think overall my drawing style is not particularly well suited to it. For one thing, I tend to enjoy finer nibs that allow me to gradually build up my values. Furthermore, my hatching method is quite fast, and this makes the pen skip. So while I think the final result is not a complete disappointment, I struggle with this drawing, because the lines are not quite as fine as I'm used to, and the skipping issue got pretty annoying. However, if you're meth more methodical with the way you draw and don't employ fast mark making, I think this pen will work perfectly well for you. Doing reviews of pens from an artist's perspective is tricky. Among writers, there tends to be a degree of uniformity when it comes to grip and speed, whereas with artists, there's a huge degree of variation. Some artists are very slow, put in a huge amount of pressure into their strokes, some artists use all kinds of unorthodox grips, and hold their pen at weird angles. Some artists work very small, some artists work larger than life size. There's just no accounting for every drawing style, so the best I can do is speak from my own experience, which is mostly based on the type of drawing that I enjoy doing. This is all to say that this review is just my opinion, an informed opinion hopefully, but still an opinion nonetheless. Why did I single out the Narwhal Demonstrator as particularly useful for artists who like to draw with their fountain pens? Here's why. The Twisby Eco, one of my favorite pens, uses a number four nib, a rare size not used in, as far as I know, any other pen. Another one of my favorite demonstrator piston fillers is the Twisby 580 AL, which uses the number five nib, a slightly more common size, but still relatively rare. But this pen uses the number six nib, just about the most common nib size out there, which means that it could easily be switched out for a huge number of other options. While there are a large number of pens that take number six size nibs, most of them are much more expensive, such as this Opus 88 Demonstrator and this pen made by Franklin Kristoff. The pens in the same price range are your basic cartridge converters that don't have a built-in filling mechanism. Now, the Twisby VAC 700 is comparable, about $20 more, 
has a well-functioning vacuum filling mechanism, and comes with a high-quality steel number 6 Yelva nib, which, let's face it, works better. But I'm not a fan of the ergonomics of this pen. It has a weird ugly lump in the middle, which prevents you from moving your grip up the barrel. And between these two pens, I'll definitely go with this one, with the $20 of savings going to buying a better functioning steel Yovo nib. These high quality, well functioning number 6 Yovo nibs come in tons of sizes from extra fine all the way up to 1.5 millimeter stub, and can be custom ground into a hundred different interesting variations. Unfortunately, even though the FPR number 6 Ultraflex nibs will fit into this nib unit, the plastic feed doesn't keep up and the pen will railroad. An additional caveat is that this pen sadly uses a proprietary housing unit, so you don't have the convenience of switching units like you would with the Opus 88 or the Franken Christoph, which use standard Yovo housing. So, in order to switch out the nib, you have to twist the housing out and pull out the nib. And these nibs fit very tightly into the housing, so it's not like you can quickly switch nibs in and out, like you can with the Twizy Vac, which has a very loose housing unit, which allows you to easily slip the nibs in and out. But here is the main reason why I think this pen is so valuable. It's the best option for food aid nibs. Why? Because it's a piston filler, and piston fillers, besides giving you great ink capacity, allow you to do this very useful hack. If I turn the knob a little, it pushes extra ink into the feed, making the line much wetter. This is a very useful thing to do, because it allows you to fill large areas with ink very quickly. It's also crucial if you want to work on rough textured watercolor paper. Being able to control flow is a pretty neat feature that can only be done with clear piston fillers. Let me show you how it works. Now here is where this hack becomes really useful when working on relatively rough cold press watercolor paper. So uh, this is the Fude pen under regular relatively dry conditions. Um, again, it produces kind of this dry brush effect which is interesting and not necessarily bad. Uh, good for sketching, good for creating all kinds of natural textures, but sometimes you simply want to fill in an area with ink, and when the flow is like this, it's somewhat hard to do. So let's do this little hack. Let's push the piston a little bit further forward, not too much, and now you can see that we can start filling much larger areas with ink, like this. It also puts down a thicker line, right? Uh, you can work faster, right? So this is a really fantastic hack. And again, if I want to dry it off, I'll take a paper towel, press on the feet a little bit, and it works dry again, right? This is a fantastic feature. So I can use the pen under normal conditions with normal dryness when I'm sketching. And then I can, when it comes time to putting a heavier line down, push a little more, more ink into the feed and fill in larger areas. Like so. So to review, this is a durable, practical, well-functioning pen which allows you to use a huge number of different kinds of nibs, a fantastic option for beginning fountain pen users, or really anyone looking for a very decent pen for under $50. And if you're an aficionado of Fude nibs like I am, I think this pen gives you a control over flow that cannot be attained by any other pen in this price range. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll be happy to reply.